Hi everybody, it's Phil Ralston from Sunday's 930 service. Coming to you from our neighbor's sister church out in uh, Anthem. I pass this every day and it reminds me of Christ in my life. I hope it reminds you of Christ in your life and I hope you enjoy service with Pastor Dave and Pastor Diane. See you soon. Thank you, Phil. It's always good to look for reminders of our faith wherever we go. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We're so pleased that you have chosen to join us in worship in this way. And this weekend we are celebrating Reformation Sunday. Now, that happened over 500 years ago. And there is one song that I think Christians around the world identify with this whole Reformation movement. And that's A Mighty Fortress Is Our God. Pastor Diane and I recorded it on Monday, and I thought I did a really good job of editing it, mixing it, putting it together, and she listened to it, and she said, Dave, I think you need to pump it up a little. I said it needs more oomph. So I oomphed it up a little. Turn up your volume, and here we go with The Mighty Fortress Is Our God. Fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks a cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. The old satanic foe has sworn to with craft and dreadful might he arms himself to fight on earth he has no equal no strength of ours can match his might we would be lost rejected champion comes to fight whom God himself elected you ask who this may be the Lord of hosts is he Christ Jesus mighty Lord God's only son adored he Feel victorious. The hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us. We tremble, not unmoved, we stand. They cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage in battle will engage his might is doomed to fail god's judgment must prevail one little word subdues him god's word forever shall abide no thanks to foes who fear it for God himself fights by our side with weapons of the spirit were they to take our house goods on her child or spouse away they cannot win the day the kingdom's ours forever we pray together dear father, father i ask you to give me strength to live this day, day 
as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your Spirit, so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others, so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. to God in the highest, sing glory to God of the earth. We give to you all our praise, with hearts and voices all our days. Our lives of thankfulness we bring, gathered together, hear us sing. Glory to God in the highest, sing glory to God of the earth. Glory to God in the highest, sing glory to God on the earth. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, victory over death you won. Take away the sins of all, give us new life and hear us call. Glory to God in the highest, sing glory to God on the earth. Glory to God in the highest, sing glory to God on the earth. Holy Spirit, guide our lives, strength and power you provide. Help us worship and rejoice, hear us as we lift our voice. Glory to God in the highest, sing glory to God on the earth. Glory to God in the highest, sing glory to God of the earth, sing glory to God of the earth. Please be sure to spend some time with our Sunday School with Sarah. Links above and at the end of worship, it's always a good experience. Sunday School with Sarah. We have live worship in person at Christ the Servant every weekend, Saturdays 5.30 p.m. and Sundays at 8, 9.30 and 11 a.m. Everybody wears masks. It's one of the safest places you're going to be all week long. For those of you who faithfully worship from home, we absolutely affirm your choice not to be out in public places, and we look forward to the day when none of us ever has to worry about that kind of safety ever again. Well, let's take a look at some of the special events with our young people within the last few weeks. Let us know where you are worshiping from or how you're serving. Leave a comment in the section below, email, text, phone, whatever. Please give us a contact and you know the email, Pastor Dave at cslconline.org. We'd love to hear from you. We are reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says... Oh, I wish they would. Mm -hmm. 
Don't you wish the days would surely come? Because we're all looking forward to those days. We've never looked forward to the days to come like we have within the past few months. That's a great yearning. I mean, that is the conversation everywhere you go. Of course, some people are anticipating it's all going to be over in just a couple of weeks because the election is happening. But then we keep hearing more about next year or maybe 2022. Mm. And we just wish that God would speed things up a little bit and that the days surely coming would come sooner rather than later. And I think that's the kind of frame of mind we have to be in as we hear this scripture is that God is promising to people mm -hmm. who are waiting for so long. And we are finally getting a sense of that. And it's only been seven, eight months, mm -hmm. not, not years, but seven, eight months. And now we understand how hard it is to just keep on waiting. And that's very true. The people had been waiting years. So why don't you start over again, since that's a record for interrupting you within the first few words of a scripture I'm going scripture to get one reading. word out, and then it's... <laughs> The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So they're in this time of waiting, exile, uh, not really being free. And God is promising there's still hope. There's going to be a new covenant but it talks about the one that was made in Sinai when they God rescued them from Egypt and that's also kind of a reminder of hope God rescued them from slavery in Egypt now God will rescue them from this exile this bondage in Babylon so does anyone else's mind work like mine when Pastor Diane said hope a new covenant Mm -hmm. And my mind immediately was, was saying, please, please say a new hope. Star Wars reference. Let's carry on. <laughs> okay. And uh, the thing is, though, God who rescued them and then made this special promise and relationship with them, the covenant, a covenant they broke, though I was their husband. Wait, 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 wait. I don't think that's the way you should read it. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, I took them out of the hand. I took them out by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke. You know, just the way you say things lets mm -hmm. you know, boy, this is where the fault lies. Oh, it they is not were the with ones. the Lord. Yes, yes. The covenant that I made with you, you broke it. Mm -hmm. The God, the imagery that, that uh, devotion and commitment that, imagery of God like the husband who's been faithful but it was Israel who strayed of course the wife could be faithful too but this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people so you know why my law within them, I will write it on their hearts. Mm -hmm. Because the first one was written in stone. That's external. Mm -hmm. It could even be broken. Even but, the stone could be broken. But when it's within you and written on your heart, mm -hmm. it's who you are. And it's living. It's not something you can leave behind. Mm -hmm. it's something you have with you everywhere goes wherever you are. So I will put my law within them, write them on their heart. I will be their God. They shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. And I think this is kind of important too, because even when they were brought out of Egypt, Moses was the mediator. Moses was the one who would go back and forth between God and the people. 
but God is making a promise that there's no one has to be in between. This is direct from God to each and every person. And each and every person is on the same level. Each and every person receives this gift of knowing God's purpose directly in their lives. And that's, they shall all know me from mm -hmm. the least of them to the greatest. It has nothing to do with the ability to intellectually retain mm -hmm. information, knowledge, but it is that God has written these things on your heart. And so that includes everybody, every one of you. No one can say, well, I don't know enough, mm -hmm. or I, I can't learn that, or I, I'm not like those other people who are so smart or, or who can quote Bible verses all the time. No, the least of them to the greatest. Exactly mm -hmm. as you said, everyone is equal because God has written equally on our hearts. And then these words that I think are also so important. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Now in our household, one of our uh, favorite activities is um, who can remember something? Like where we put anything. <laughs> I'm looking for something all the way, all over the house. And I cannot remember where it is. And I start worrying. Yep. And then I ask her, hey, do you know where this is? And, and oh, it, here. It goes the other way. I've been looking for something and looking for something. I, I'm thinking it's really lost. And then I'm given yeah. some hints. And the next thing you know, I'm like, oh, right there. Yeah. Okay. You know, the idea that it's gone forever. And mm -hmm. there have been those times when I've looked for something and I realized, no, I did lose it. Mm -hmm. And it is gone forever. And so when God says, I remember your sin no more, it's gone forever. It's gone. And we're the ones that keep remembering our own sin. But God doesn't. Psalm 46 is the psalm that we read every year on the Reformation weekend. So here we go. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. And our world has been shaking for months now. Maybe not the physical earthquake, but, but life as we know it has just been completely, really disrupted. And yet, that reassurance that God is our refuge, or in the words of the hymn, a mighty fortress, and we can depend on God to look out for us. Now, of course, the things that are listed here, the things that we will not fear, uh, is uh, the earth be moved, the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, the waters rage and foam, and the mountains tremble. If that were ever going to happen, it would be in 2020, hmm. this year. I think that's coming up next. We still have two months to go. Okay, put that in. But no matter what, even in our midst of a pandemic, we will not fear. We never fear because God takes care of us. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. What a juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever used that word before. From all the things that, the cosmic things that could go wrong, mm -hmm. to now there's a river mm -hmm. and streams. And for a place that's setting records still every day for no rainfall, doesn't that sound nice? Those streams would certainly make us glad. Mm -hmm. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. I'm going to say something about that, but not just yet. Remember, the nations rage, the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. 
what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. I think at first where that passage is heading, it seems to talk so much about like, the power of God, that God speaks and the earth melts away. But then it gets to a place where the purpose of that power is to make war to cease, to take apart the weapons of war and remove them completely. And so restore peace. And after hearing about all that cosmic disruption, listen to this next phrase. Be still then and know that I am God. How often we forget to just be still. Seems like we always have something to go through. Do this, do that, the next thing, what's coming next. But just to be still. Now that's different than sitting quietly. I think be, be still includes quieting all the commotion that is inside of us and letting our mind clear. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And we hear from Romans chapter 3, verse 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. It's a longer sentence trying to say we can't earn our salvation. We can't do enough good deeds to make things right with God. That's not something that we can accomplish. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. The righteousness of God, I think there's so many ways we try to wrap our minds around that. And on the one hand, Sometimes we think about maybe God is right, God is holy, uh, God is the just judge of all. And there's, that's true, but I also really think that the righteousness of God is God's faithfulness toward us to not give up on us, no matter what, even to the point of sending Jesus so that we can be made right with God. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all messed up. Nobody's left out. They are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. Just by Jesus, that's it. For he did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded by what law? by that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Now this whole section here is again the, the, the scripture we read every year on this day because it reminds us that this is foundational for the Reformation. Those centuries ago, Martin Luther read that, and it was like the light bulb came on. 
he was so hard on himself that he was not good enough and he needed to be punished for his sins. And it was leading him down a very dark path, mm -hmm. one from which there is no grace, forgiveness available in there because it comes from God for all. And so we read about this and we, and we emphasize this God's love for us, God's grace for us. But you say, then why do I still feel guilty? Why do I still feel like, like a failure? Well, sometimes we train ourselves to be that way. And uh, as, as Christian pastors, we know that sometimes church can also be part of that problem. Because we say, come to church and experience God's love, but now we want you to beg God for mercy. We want you to say how bad you are and confess and and then we'll give you forgiveness. And, and we're trained up in that way. And then we read these scriptures. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works pres prescribed by the law. It's all done for us in Jesus Christ. And that's what grace is. Alleluia, gift of life. Alleluia, guiding light. Alleluia, word of God. Alleluia. We read from the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Jesus is having a discussion with Jews who have come to see possibly that Jesus is the Messiah, God's chosen one, and they want to know more, they want to follow, but at the same time they still kind of have their foot in the way they've been raised, the heritage and all that they're used to. And so there's a little bit of a a little bit of a struggle and Jesus is trying to let them know listen to me. Who do you listen to? And if they listen to Jesus, they're going to know the truth. And the truth will make you free. And I think that that is, that's the truth, mm -hmm. that Jesus has come for us. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's why it makes you free. Telling the truth about something isn't what makes you free, even though we like to quote this. If we think someone's lying about something, you know, you see the courtroom drama, you know, tell the truth and they finally break down and tell the truth. And then, <laughs> no, that's not what this is. This is all about Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and we have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? There's so many layers in that. It's, um, it's, it's, it's sort of surprising because the Jews were slaves in Egypt. They were captives in Babylon. Now the Romans are, they're subject to the Romans. So it does seem almost an odd statement, but perhaps uh, memories are short and they, they don't look at it that, that way. What do you mean we would be made free? We're not slaves. We're not slaves to anybody. Well, it, it, it's kind of like these are sounding just like Jesus' disciples <laughs> because the disciples are always asking Jesus, what did you mean by that? What is this? Yeah. And here, uh, the Jews who believed in him, remember that's the introduction to all of this. Mm -hmm. They are the same way. They want to know, what do you mean mm -hmm. by you will be made free? Well, let's see. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Wouldn't it be nice to be free of some things? You know, we, some things just keep us captive. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. Remember, that was the reading from Psalm 46. And I said, 
Uh, that's going to come later. And then Jesus says, you will be free indeed. Wouldn't you like to be free of the nations raging and the kingdoms shaking? Because in a sense, that's what we go through in our country now. It seems like every day our nations rage. And it used to be a time when nation would rage against nation. Now it's nations rage internally. And of course, we're, we're very well attuned to what's happening in our own country. But this kind of thing is happening all over the world right now. And then you add on to it uh, the stress and uncertainty of, of a pandemic and the, uh, the huge burden it places on the medical system around the world. Mm. You know, as much as you think it's nothing or, or something, go to a hospital and see the devastation that's play, taking place in hospitals. Talk to a doctor or a nurse or anyone that's involved in a COVID ward and they will tell you a different story than you've heard before of how bad things can actually get. Well, we're just a few days away from the election day, which I think needs to be changed to be called now the election deadline because we can cast our votes mm. so much earlier in so many ways. I've already voted. And I am so thankful that in Nevada, they mailed all of us the ballots because if you haven't opened yours, do it now. It is the longest ever mm -hmm. in Nevada. It is very long. It takes a long time to figure out how you're going to vote for all these things and then to actually do it. I mean, she told me everyone to vote for and it still took me a long time to fill in the bubbles. So please do vote. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give my political speech right now. This is what you've been waiting so many years for. And here it goes. After the election, I have already decided now that I will live. No matter the outcome. I will thrive. No matter the outcome. I will enjoy happiness no matter the outcome. There are some among us who believe that if the left does not win everything, all is lost. And the, and the country will crumble and life will be devastated. Then there are those that are on the right that feel if things don't go their way, all is lost and our country will crumble. See the problem with that? No matter what, after the election, about half our country is gonna be really happy. And the other half is probably gonna be angry. Or sad. Or sad, or both. Or both. Who knows, there might be some who have the election go their way and they're still angry. That happens too. But I listen to scripture that also concludes, choose life. And that's what I'm choosing now before any results are known. Some of us have lived long enough to see elections completely sway from one side to the other politically. And guess what? This country perseveres and moves on. And we will yet again. I have no clue what is going to happen. I'm not confident one way or the other. It's a mystery. But what takes place after the election for me is not a mystery. Our church will thrive. If COVID-19 couldn't strike us down as a church, no election will. And there's something about casting a vote that makes us forget. We know that Jesus is for us. We know that Jesus loves us. We know that it is God's grace for us. We know that we are to love people. And then when we put that check in the box or fill in the oval or touch the screen, we forget and we've become very good at making others enemies 
and we think about other people who vote differently as somehow being an enemy. We need to stop doing that. We need to stop making our political vote a dividing line. We need to all be informed by our Christian faith when we cast our votes. Even Christians disagree on issues and candidates, and we need to allow for that. So when the voting is all done, we go on our way. And we have chosen that that's what we do. We don't see others as the enemy or even the other side or blue or red. We all agree that we participate in our country's great voting process. And we thank God for that opportunity. So when you vote, remember Jesus has set you free indeed. No doubt about it, there's so much hurt Wandering through this dry desert I've reached my limit, can't take any more Even the simple things seem like a chore Carry this load out here all alone My destination place is unknown Troubles come easily crowding around I'm feeling lost and want to be found And Jesus says Behold I make all things new these words are trustworthy, true. No matter your pain, how deep your sorrows, I am all your tomorrows. I will always draw near. I will wipe every tear. These words are trustworthy true behold I make all things new when day after day it seems I might break can't make it through without this heartache In spite of these troubles, do not delay Listen and pause and take time to pray And Jesus says, Behold, I make all things new These words are trustworthy, true no matter your pain, how deep your sorrows, I am all your tomorrows. I will always draw near. I will wipe every tear. These words are trustworthy, true. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. These words are trustworthy, true. No 
matter your pain, how deep your sorrows, I am all your tomorrows, I will always draw near, I will wipe every tear, these words are trustworthy, true, behold I make all things new. So remember, as you vote, think about this. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Turn to your whoever's there with you. Wish them uh, peace of the Lord. And especially in these coming days, keep really wishing everyone the peace of the Lord. sure you have some bread and some wine or juice available and we ask that you join us in speaking these words in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus Christ took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life, feeding us through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life, feeding us through Jesus Christ. Send us now from this place to all the world to teach your grace. With joyful hearts we make our way, with thankful minds we sing today. We lift our voice, give glory to God. Rejoicing, praise, give glory to God. We lift our voice, give glory to God. Rejoicing, praise, give glory to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Stay in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God, and you'll see us next week. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life, feeding us through Jesus Christ. 
Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life.